Open your Bibles with me this morning to two openings. I'm reading from the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And now we read from verse 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1 down to verse 3. After that, we're going to read the book of John chapter 15, verse 1 down to verse 8 of John chapter 15. Glory to Jesus. If you are there, say yes. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony or good report. By faith we understand that the walls that were framed, that the walls were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. John chapter 15. Reading verse 1 to 8 of John chapter 15. I am the true vine. And my father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. And every branch that bear fruit, it prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So, you will be my disciples. By the grace of God, this morning, I would like to continue on the theme of this convention. And the subject is faith to prosper. Look at your neighbor, say, faith to prosper. Can you say to somebody, say, faith to prosper. Faith. That is the subject of this convention. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Father, what a glorious God you are. We are so grateful for all you have done 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord, for resurrecting for us. Thank you, Lord, for ascending for us. You did all this for us. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. This morning, O oh God, I demand for your presence and your glory upon this service. I demand in Jesus' name that you will anoint your word 
afresh. Anoint me afresh. And allow this word to come forth with power and with authority to bless the life of your people. Let there be lifting this morning. Let there be promotion for your people this morning. Let there be enlargement for everyone this morning. Let the devil be put to shame in the life of everyone this morning. I give you all the glory, Father. I pray that everyone will leave this place with full dose of your word that will cause them to survive in the time and the season we are. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Faith to prosper. Faith to prosper. That is the theme and the topic of our convention, which I'm speaking on. This season is a season that God wants all his children to come to know him in a deeper way. Many of us claim to know God, but in works we deny him. Many of us claim to know God. The only knowledge of God you have is only when you are in the four wall of the church building. After the church building, you become another person. God wants us to know him in a deeper way. In a deeper, everybody say deeper way. The knowledge of God, God wants it to sink into our heart. To know him in a deeper manner. John 8.32 Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. He said the truth has the power to cause freedom for you. And God said in John 6, 14, or 14, 6 rather, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. That is the truth you need to know. The truth is not just on the pages of the Bible, the truth is a person. You will know the truth, and what will the truth do? Make you free. The truth has power to make you free, to free you from everything that is holding on to you. So this morning I want to continue on the subject faith to prosper. Faith, our faith, we need faith to prosper. Our relationship with God is based on faith. Every relationship you and I have with God is based on faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, he said, for without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It is through our faith that we can please God. How many of us want to please God? Let me see your hands up. Which means you need to know something deeper about faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. Our life of today is as a result of the faith we have. The level you are in spiritually is the level of the faith that you have. If you want to go deeper in God, your faith must increase. Are you listening to me? If you want to go deeper in God, you want to know him the more, your faith must increase. God wants us to increase our faith. To be deeper more in faith. Because that's the only way we can please him. If you want to please God, then you must take the issue of faith very seriously. Our level physically is as a level of the level of our faith. When your level, when your faith increases, your level physically will increase. Your level financially is the level of the faith you have as a child of God. When your faith increases, your level will surge up. God wants us to take issue of faith very seriously. That is the only way we can please God. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we are talking about faith to prosper. No one can prosper without faith. No one can be what God expects him to be without having faith in God. And it's my prayer this morning 
that your faith will, will be in an increasing form and you will please God as a result of that in Jesus' name. So faith is something that we have to examine from time to time. Last year around this time, they gave us a topic in the ministry, overcoming faith. And I taught you for three days about faith that overcomes. If you want to develop your faith, if you are not here last year, or you are here and you have forgotten what was said, go and get the message of Easter faith convention of last year. You want to overcome, listen to that message, you will definitely grow in faith and your faith will overcome whatever the situation that you find yourself in Jesus' name. So our faith need to be doubled up. Our faith need to increase. And so we need faith to prosper. We need faith to prosper. I'll be telling you about that kind of faith that prosper people today by the grace of God. But before I go there, I will define the word prosper last week. Because Jesus came to the world, did all he did in order for human being to prosper. Everything Jesus did on the cross was for the purpose of you and I prospering. In the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23, I quoted it last well, Friday. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through Adam, all of us fell into sin. Because when Adam sinned, he registered us in sin. That's why you don't need to teach a child. Once a child is born and a child is growing, you'll be start hearing the child or seeing the child telling lies. Where did they learn it from? It's not from you, obviously. It's from Adam. Once you have Adamic nature, it is you are you are born with that sinful nature. So Satan went into the garden to mess up human being. We were all messed up being before we met Christ. Our life is messed up. Our emotion is messed up. We were messed up spiritually. So he went purposely to bring us down from the height God has placed us. So God prepared a way of salvation through which where we have been brought down, brought down, we can be lifted up above that level. Look at your neighbor, say, Easter season is a season of lifting. This is the actual time Jesus came to raise us up from the messed up position. Ever say messed up position. So his death on the cross of Calvary was for the purpose of raising us we that we are dead in trespasses and sin he raised us out of that position and I decree this morning somebody will be raised up from that level amen. can I hear a bigger 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 amen? amen so Jesus came to prosper us to move us up from the place where we have been put by the devil Devil has failed over your life. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? I said devil has failed over your life. Amen. When he went into the garden, he thought we we're going to be down forever. He has forgotten. The Bible says if the prince of this world, that is the devil, had known that by crucifying Jesus, we we're going to have eternal life, he wouldn't have done it. But he was dumbfounded. He did not know the secret of God. Look at your neighbor and say, there's something about God that devil does not understand. So he went into the garden and thought we're going to be there forever. Not knowing that God knows the end from the beginning. And he had prepared a way of salvation by which a messed up man can be moved up. Can you please put your hands together for Jesus? He had forgotten. He had forgotten. He did not know that God had a superior plan. Many of us, we aggrandize Satan's plan. But let me tell you, God has a superior plan over your life. He has a superior plan. And it's that plan of God that will come to pass. Can I hear a bigger amen from somebody? 
I say, is that superior plan of God that will come to pass in your life? Devil will not have the last say over your life. I say, Satan will not have the last say over your life. I say, Satan will not have the last say over your life. We are here today because God sidetracked the enemy over human race. So if you are here this morning and you are born again, you are most blessed because you have linked yourself with Christ who raised, who was raised from the dead. So the world prosper. I quoted so many things, I said so many things about it on Friday and you need to get the message to link up with this. So Jesus came to make us to prosper. Among the things I said last week is that he came to make us to turn out well. Everybody say turn out well. You will turn out well. That's the reason why he came. He died, shed his blood so that as many as received him can turn out well. Came so that you and I can turn out well. You may not be well now, but you will turn out well. Yeah. Things may not be all right in your life now, but it will be all right. Yeah. I said your life will be all right. Yeah. That is what the word prosper me to turn out well. He came so that you can turn out well. You can be what he wants you to be. You can metamorphose from, from the level you are in to the level you want you to be. To the student of biology, they taught us about metamorphosis. That is uh, the gradual change from one level to another. And God wants you to turn from the level of glory you are in now to another level of glory. And devil likes it or not, you will turn to another level of glory. Tell your neighbor, say, my glory will soon shine. God turns us around from the level of glory to another level of glory. That is why he came to die for us on the cross of Calvary. So, to prosper me, to turn out well. Another word, to prosper means to magnify. Jesus came to magnify us. All of us to one level or the other. You need magnification. You need God to magnify you. Especially some of us that came from a background that is not magnified. <laughs> you need magnification for men and the devil and all manner of spirit to respect you. It was Jesus' magnification that made devil to be under our feet. I mean, how can you say, devil is under your feet? Devil is under my feet. The Bible says when he ascended, according to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, down to verse 22, he ascended on high. He, 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 he took it, he led the captivity captive. When he ascended, we ascended with him. Everybody say, we ascended with him. We ascended with him. We ascended with him. Far above. Everybody say, far above all principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world we ascended above all of them that is why he said you can cast them out in Luke chapter 10 verse 19 he said behold I give unto you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and over all the power of the enemy he said and nothing shall by any means hurt you what people of the world run away from is what you are confronting. Because you have been magnified. Everybody say, I've been magnified by God. When somebody says, hey, there is a demon somewhere, before they even mention N, 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 they have run away. But God said, I have given you power to tread. Everybody say, I'm treading upon them. Over the serpent and scorpion. Over the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt me. That's the song the, 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 the choir sang this morning. We have an authority. Jesus has magnified us. As you are seated, if you are born again, you are a magnified person. Oh, somebody missed that. Oh, you missed that. Magnification does not determine your physical size. 
You may be tiny, yet you are above the devil. You may be skinny, yet you are above the devil. You may not, you may even be literate, yet you are above the devil. Everybody say, I've been magnified by God. Jesus came to magnify us, to prosper us. And the word prosper me, magnify. He came to magnify human race. All of us that are born again, you are a magnified person. And that is the way he wants you to see yourself. You see, Easter, what he did will be nothing if you don't receive it. Most people sit down and begin to say, he died on the cross. He died 2,000 years ago. What he wants is, receive why I died. Are you listening to me? For as long as you have refused to receive why, the reason why he died, you are still making his death in vain over your life. But the death of Christ will never be in vain. Amen. I say over your own life, the death of Christ will never be in vain. Amen. And one of the things you need to understand is that he died to prosper you. To magnify you. Everybody said to magnify me. That's the reason why he died. And he had died 2,000 years ago. And so you need by faith to receive magnification. And I release that knowledge of magnification into your spirit man this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Die to magnify us. Why did he die again? What does that word prosper mean? Prosper means to uplift. Ever say uplift. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Samuel rather, chapter 2 verse 8. He raised the poor from the dust. He lifted the needy, the beggar, from the donkey. And he set them with the prince, even the prince of his people. To uplift, ever say uplift. Say, Jesus has died to uplift me. He raised you up. Today, you are no longer seated. You are, I mean, you are no longer standing or you are on the earth. You are also in heaven. Jesus is representing me there. I have his authority that is using in heaven right here on the heart. Look at your neighbor. Say, I've been lifted up. That is if you are born again. If you are born again, you have been lifted up. Everybody say, I've been lifted up again. He died to lift us, to uplift us, to raise us up beyond the level we are, we devil has put us. He lifted us up. From that level. I want you to walk like it. Talk like somebody who is lifted. At times when you talk like it. Some people will think you are proud. But if you are not. You are, you, are only, you are only living the world. Everybody say I'm living the world. They will think you are proud. When you talk like somebody. Who has been uplifted by God. I've been uplifted. That does not determine the morning in your purse. This is a spiritual thing. It determines your money in the back account of heaven. Jesus Christ, even the only accountant he had, stole his money. Assuming he, he was living by what is in the past, his ministry would have collapsed. But he was not living by what is in the past. He was rich. Ever say he was rich. Anything a rich man needs at a time, he gets. Not because of what is in the past, but because of what he knows he has. Look at your neighbor say, you have been lifted up. It's good for you to know it, that you will not be stranded in life. When Jesus was walking here, he was not stranded. There's nothing like, uh, how can you put a thief as a back account? accountant? If he was living by that thing, but the scripture tells us in John chapter 8 that Satan and that Judas also always take out of what is in the past. He was not depending on that. A time came, he needed to pay tax. There was no money in the past. He cannot be, a rich man cannot be stranded. He sent Peter. Peter go to the river. The first fish that come up, you will see enough money to pay for you and I. Go and pay. And Peter went, and the first fish that came up, fish was, he has kept resources everywhere. He cannot be stranded. 
he cannot be stranded. Now, that is what it means to be rich. That is what it means to be, not to have money loaded in the account, and yet, if anything happens, that money is gone. Riches, there's what is called riches in glory. Not riches in GTB. Or Zenith. Everybody say riches in glory. As a child of God, there are riches that God has provided for you in glory. You will not be stranded on this earth. He came to link us all with our riches. On the cross of Calvary, when he died, he came to link you and I up with our riches. Not the heartly one, but the one in glory. No matter what. A man said, he said, have you ever seen, he said, no matter the economy in the jungle, lion will not go hungry. No matter the economy, lion will not go hungry because all the other animals there, they are made for him. The purpose of this faith to prosper message is for you to see yourself beyond you. Because all the time you see yourself alone, but you have not seen yourself beyond you. You are a child of God. Heaven has a covenant to take care of you. It's a covenant. It's not you, your life will be taken care of by heaven while you are here. You are an ambassador of God. So Jesus came in order to prosper you, to uplift you. There is a mind upliftment first, spirit upliftment, before you begin to see it in the physical. Are you listening to me this morning? That is the reason why he came. He came to link you with resources that can never run dry. He came to lift you and link you with resources in glory that can never finish. No matter what is happening on the earth in Nigeria, listen to me, lion will not grow hungry. And we are of the lion of the tribe of Judah. If you belong to him, can you put your hands together for Jesus? We are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Glory to Jesus. That is what Jesus came to do on the heart. To magnify. Everybody say magnify. You are the one that looks yourself little. Before witches and wizards, you are a giant. You look at yourself because of lack of knowledge. John 8, 32, my people are this. Uh, uh, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Hosea 4, 6. He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You are the one that belittle yourself. God does not belittle you. Look at your neighbor say, you are not belittle. Look at yourself, your neighbor say, you are not belittle. God has not come to belittle us or to make us to be pulled down. He came to raise us up. That's why he said to them that believe. He gave them the right to become what? A child of God. Is God limited? Can a child of God be limited? Not when you have God who is, a, who is your father. You cannot be limited. When you are limited, you limited yourself by your level of knowledge. By your level of knowledge, you limited yourself. He came to magnify. Everybody say to magnify. Look at your neighbor. Say, I am a magnified person. So respect me. From today, respect. I'm a magnified person. You got some people. You see, if you know your neighbor is a child of God, who has the nature of God, who has been magnified by Jesus, you will give due regard and honor. But many of us, you don't even know yourself. Don't talk of knowing your neighbor. You disrespect people. You look at your wife. It's my wife. He has no, he's, he's, you look at your husband and say, is not my husband? I know. Respect. Everybody say respect. respect. When you respect someone, you look at Christ in that life. For Christ in you is the hope of glory. Is somebody listening to me this morning? Christ in you has magnified you. I am not alone. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you, even unto thee. So when you see me walking, I walk with Jesus. I walk with Jesus. 
He scares all the demons around me. All the witches and wizards. He scares them. You may not even see them, but he sees them. He scares them away. Say, touch not my anointed. And do my prophet no harm. This one is not your meat. He says it to them, even without you hearing it. This one is not your meat. You better go somewhere else. There are other meat somewhere. They have not come to know me. Those who want put themselves, put their own life in danger. But this one is not for you. It's not your meat. It scares them away. If somebody listen this morning, look at your neighbor say, you have been magnified by God. And you need to live like that. You need to reason like that. You need to walk like that. You need to think like that. Think like a magnified person. You think like it. You think like it. Let your boast be in God. Because with God on our side, everything will be all right. Look at your neighbor say, you will turn out well. Look at somebody and say, you will turn out well in life. So when Jesus came, he came to prosper us. And to prosper me, to magnify. Another word for prosper means to enlarge. Ever say enlarge. He came to enlarge you. He came to enlarge you. Jabez prayed the prayer. He said, oh God, thou should enlarge my coast. Enlarge me. Make me bigger. Make me stronger. Enlarge my territory. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. Ten. He said, enlarge my coast. May somebody here his coast be enlarged. Amen. May you be enlarged in the mind. Amen. May you be enlarged in the work of your hand. Amen. May the work of your hand produce more than you ever imagined. Amen. Can I hear a bigger, 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 bigger? Amen. Amen. Jesus came to enlarge us. Enlarge us. That is why the business you have started little is not going to remain little. It's going to be enlarged. It's going to be enlarged. It's going to be enlarged. Every child of God have a reason to believe for enlargement. Faith to prosper. Faith to be enlarged. It takes faith for things to, 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 to boom in your hand. God wants to make things to boom. He wants to make things to blow in your hand. God is an enlarger and is going to enlarge somebody. If you are that person, say it louder, amen. amen. If you are the person God will enlarge, say it louder, amen. amen. God came to prosper us, to enlarge us. Enlarge us. Enlarge us. Another word for prosper means to elevate. Ever say elevate. So everything he came to do on this star was for the purpose of elevation. No longer will you remain small. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19 says, Out of their mouth, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them. This day, from this day forward, may you be multiplied. Amen. He said, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Look at your neighbor. Say, God will glorify you. And you will not be small. Look at somebody and say, God will glorify you. And you will not be small. Elevation comes when God put glory upon your life. And that's what he came to do. That was why you went to the cross. You will never see any word of God pulling you down. Every time God speaks, it speaks to you to make you to think up. To make you to look up. To make you to believe there is life after death. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. For somebody waiting for a change in any area of your life this morning, I want you to know that your change is coming. Amen. I say it again. Say your change is coming. Amen. What you have not become, you will become it. Amen. 
What you desire to be, you will be. I said, whatever you desire to be, you will become. Because God is a God who elevates. He came to elevate us. He died in agony because of our elevation. Faith to prosper. Faith to prosper. Faith to be elevated. That's what we are talking about. He's an elevating God. Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7. The Bible says in Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7, he said, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but from the Lord. Everybody say, from the Lord. Say it louder. Say, from the Lord. From the Lord. Promotion does not come from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. Verse 7 says, But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Listen to me. Easter period is a season of elevation for somebody who can believe for it. May you be elevated in that area of your life. I said, may you be elevated in that area of your life. May you move forward from the level of being nobody to somebody. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said, this is my season of elevation. That is what God wants. As, as long as you allow it to rest in your heart, it will manifest in your life. Whatever you see in anybody's life now, force came from the heart. Allow this word of God to sink into your heart that you are not a fool. You are not a nobody. He came to make you somebody. To elevate you. To the level you should be. Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm being lifted right now. Say, I'm being elevated right now. The word prosper, I'll give you this last one. The word prosper also means to upgrade. Look at your neighbor. Say, God has come to upgrade you. Upgrade you. Upgrade you. From being a son of man to a son of God. From being a sinner to saints. From being a nobody serving Satan to God's servant. Look at your neighbor say, he has come to upgrade me. Upgrading. He came to lift you up. He came to take you from the married clay and set your feet on the rock to stay. Upgrading in every respect. Upgrading in every area. And somebody is going to be elevated upgraded this morning. If you are that person, can you say it louder? Amen. Yeah. He came to upgrade us. We are being upgraded. As I'm speaking now, God is working on somebody's mind to upgrade you. Yeah. If you know all these things that Jesus has come to do, it will change the way you look at life. It will change the way you treat other people around your life. Because as God is upgrading you, he's upgrading them too. You don't call somebody God is upgrading stupid. You don't call somebody God is upgrading. You don't pull them down. You don't become an agent of the enemy to pull down people around your destiny. But if, because if you don't know it, you will be degrading yourself and you will be degrading all that. Look at your neighbor say, stop that nonsense from henceforth. Stop it. Stop degrading yourself. Stop degrading others. Because Jesus has come to upgrade us. I am an upgraded human being. I have left being a sinner to become what? A saint. That is upgrading. I've been lifted up far above principalities and what? Power. That is upgrading. I've been lifted up from being just ordinary son of man to become what? A son of God. Upgrading. I've been upgraded from servant of Satan to, the, to become servant of God. Can you please put your hands together for Jesus? For upgrading you. Our God came to prosper us. To upgrade us. Now for us to be upgraded... For us to prosper. For us to eat jackpot. For us to turn out well. For us to have benefits. For us to blossom. 
for us to do well, for us to thrive and arrive to our destination, what do we need to do is to have faith. Everybody say faith. You cannot get all these that God has prepared without your faith inclusive. It is faith that connects you to become an upgraded person. Faith, your belief connects you to be upgraded. And I know your faith will rise this morning. I say your faith will rise this morning. So let me tell you a few things about faith. What is faith? Faith is the power that God put within us that connect us with the upgrader. Faith is the power that connects. Everybody say connect. Connecting faith. Connecting faith. Until you are connected, you cannot be upgraded. Everyone who refuses to be connected properly remain in the same position. And that is the message of Easter. You got to be connected properly, continuously, consistently, and you will begin to see upgrading in every area, lifting, enlargement, promotion in every aspect of your life. Everything determine what determine your upgrading, your prosperity is your connecting, your connection. Look at your neighbor and say, have you connected properly? God wants us to connect with him. The Bible says in John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right, he gave the power to become the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as believe, as many that have faith, they link themselves to the power of God that upgrades. And I know in Jesus' name, this morning, every one of us, we will reconnect again. Amen. I said you will reconnect again. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 11. Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 11. He said, but what seeth it? The word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Ever said the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Look at what saved people is connecting faith. If you believe with your heart, you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. He said, thou shall be what? Saved. For with the heart, man believeth to what? Righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. Everyone that has not connected, you need to connect through all this. Connecting faith brings you above the level you are in. God wants you to connect with him. Connect with him. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that the Lord, that God has raised him from the dead, he said, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believeth. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. The moment you con confess, the moment you confess him as your Lord with your mouth, you move. A step ahead of where you are. God is moving somebody up today. Amen. If you are that person, say it louder, amen. amen. I said, God is moving somebody up today. Amen. The Bible tells us that our faith must connect. I'll be explaining to you in a few minutes time. Must be a connecting faith. And you must connect consistently. Many people connected the first time, but they removed themselves. And so things are not working in their life and they complain and wonder what about your connection? Every child of God this morning must check, check his or her connection. Look at your neighbor say, check your connection. Check your connection with the Lord. Things are not working in your life because your connection is not sure. I'll show you in the Bible. 
I'll show you in the Bible as time goes on. Another word for faith is that faith is a justifier. Ever say, faith is a justifier. The scripture says in Romans 5, 1, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God. The message Bible put it this way. He said, that word just found me to set us right with him. Everybody say, I've been set right with him. He said, by entering through faith into what God always wanted to do for us, set us right with him. Faith makes you right with God. That's why the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible. Faith makes you right with God. Everybody say, I am right with God. Because I have faith. Faith makes us right with God. Make us fit for him. The people that can be fit for God are the men and women of faith. You can be fit for him. That's what pleases him. And today, God will energize somebody's faith. If you are that person, say louder, amen. Amen. So faith is a justifier. Another word for faith is, faith is a good report obtainer. If you are dealing with God, for God, a good what? Report. God, see your report and there is no faith. He can faith. Isaac, by faith. Noah, by faith. And you see that their report came by what? Faith. Whatever you get and you cannot point to faith is nothing. As far as God is concerned, faith must be the one that makes things happen for you. You must be able to give testimony of faith. How things happen. How things worked out for you. You have husband and it's not faith. You suffer in that marriage. Faith. Ever say faith. It what makes us to please God. Is somebody listening to me this morning? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2. The Bible said they had faith. Faith is a distinguisher. It's what it is faith that distinguishes and set them above the crowd. Faith distinguished them. Faith set them above the crowd. Put the message Bible up. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2. The act of faith is what distinguished our what? Ancestors. Set them above the crowd. If you follow the way of faith, you will be set above the crowd. You will be distinguished above others. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is somebody here that wants to be distinguished? Receive a distinguishing power. I say, let it come upon your life today in the name of Jesus. You will soon become envy of people. Oh, somebody means I say, you will soon become envy of people. You will soon become envy of people. I say, you will soon become envy of people. They know you as a man that is nothing, nothing to, there's nothing to be reckoned with. They will soon know you as a man that has a lot to be reckoned with. That's what God will make you. You know, when you grow up in the midst of people, they saw you in your time when there is no tata in the eyes of Yanya. You can't find that in the dictionary anyway. It's a Yoruba English. And say, Kosi tata lodu Yanya, which means there's nothing. In the days of nothingness, when the darkness was upon the surface of the deep, <laughs> they know you like that, but you will rise. You see, they will not understand as you are rising. Ah, Oman rise is stepping forward, he's been upgraded, he's been lifted, he's been enlarged, he's been elevated, he's been blossomed, he's bearing fruit right now. May you receive it in the name of Jesus. That is what my God does, He upgrades systematically, little by little, a little here, a little there. You keep rising. 
a nobody will soon become somebody. They will never organize a meeting without your presence. You know when, when they organize a meeting in family, if you are not there before, they go ahead. Because there is nothing. What will it do? Because nothing. But now, from henceforth, no meeting will be organized without your presence. When they gather together, they will not succeed in their meeting without your presence. They will say, ah, Bumati day. Meeting will allow us in Bumati day. We can't do any meeting because he's not present. <laughs> what caused that to happen in your life? Now, when you are upgraded, that's what happens. Give us it. You are the one that will give them a what? Because that's the time is free for you. Everybody will converge. They will make themselves free during your time. If somebody listen to me. All the pigs to eat my last meal. First Kings chapter 17, verse 14, from verse 5 downward. So I'm about to gather sticks and eat my last meal. That is when God intervened. Listen to me. For a child of God with faith, at the nick of time, what will take you out of shame will appear. I say at the nick of time. When you are about to enter into shame, God will intervene. Yeah. That is what happened to people who have been upgraded. God will not allow you to be put to shame because he knows that once you are put to shame, he is put to shame. That is how much he loves you. But you need to know it to expect it. Many of us live in fear all through our life because you don't know him. When you know him and you know that you are in a covenant. Listen, this relationship is not ordinary. It's a covenant. Casting your cares on him for he cares for you. First Peter chapter 5 verse, verse 7. Casting your cares for him for he cares for you. He won't wait until the devil takes over before he delivers you. But many of us, hey, hey devil must be to, oh, I've to, listen to me. If you trust this God at the nick of time, it will rise for you. I have seen it many times. God rising like a call to just defend, to just do something for me. Because I trust him. Listen to me. Faith distinguishes. It's a difference maker. It's a difference maker. For every child of God, this year, next year, all through your life, faith will make a difference in your life. As a faith, will make a difference in your life. The word of God says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7, the Bible says, by faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. That's the message Bible. In the middle of what? Dry land. How can you build a ship in the middle? Middle. Which means it will take long before you can get to the sea. But God, you see, faith made him to build in the middle because that is where water will come and meet him there. That's where what? Not today that people can, they can drive the ship into the, where the water is. He did not, there was no water very close by. It was in the, the middle of dry land. And God said, rain is coming, built. And it was built for almost 120 years. In the midst of a dry land. The middle of dry land. He was warned about something he couldn't see. And acted on what he was told. Look at your neighbor. Say, faith is acting on what you are told. The result... His family was saved. His act of faith drew a sharp line between the evil of the unbelieving world and the rightness of the believing world. As a result, Noah became intimate with God. 
faith is a difference maker. This year, don't live like an unbeliever. Live in faith. Because faith will make a difference in your life. Yeah. When you come to church, come to hear faith word. Take word and go and walk on those words. Many people come, they receive, but they don't act on it. They don't do nothing about it. God said, faith will make a difference. And in Jesus' name, may faith make a difference in your life. I told you that the faith that makes people to prosper is a connecting faith. Everybody say connecting faith. Until you learn what it means to connect, you may not be able to prosper. A connecting faith brings about prosperity in the life of everyone who connected to the Lord. What does it mean to connect? To connect means to unite. Everybody say unite. You become one. To bind together. To establish a relationship with. Faith that will prosper and continue to prosper is a faith that has established a unique relationship with God. A unique relationship with God. To connect also means to join together. Everybody say join together. It also means to link or fasting together. Help us a link of fasting together. Not many Christians have gotten to the point of linking and fasting to the Lord. Fasting to the Lord. In this kingdom, this is what prosper people. Faith that connects, that link you, that fasting you together, that establish a relationship with the person that can bring about your prosperity. Is that faith that will prosper you? It's a connecting faith. You and I need to connect to the person of Jesus and to the work He has done in the on the cross. You have to connect to the person. Ever say to the person, if you are going to prosper and continue to prosper, there must be a continuous connecting connection with the person. Of Jesus. Everybody say connecting faith. The scripture told us in John chapter 15. That we read. The scripture told us. About an abiding faith. Everybody say abiding faith. Faith that will prosper. Apart from connecting. Is the faith that operates. Through your continuous abiding. Ever say continuous abiding. To the person of Christ. Abiding faith. Many people want to prosper. But they are not abiding. They are not abiding. Look at what Jesus said. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit. It takes away. They are not bearing fruit because they are not connected. Fruit bearing is a type of, pro, pro, of prospering. Like I told you on Friday. When you are bearing fruit spiritually, you are bearing fruit financially, you are bearing fruit in every area of life, it's a type, see, you cannot connect and not bear any fruit. You cannot connect properly and not bear any fruit. And I will tell you levels of connection in a short while. And every brand that bear fruit, it prunes that it may bear more fruit. Look at your neighbor say, you will bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Verse 4 says, abide in me. Look at your neighbor say, abide in Christ. Somebody say, well, I'm in church and I abide. You may be in church and you have departed from the Lord. Because the work of your hand shows, your character shows, your demon and decorum shows that you claim to be, but are you really in? 
If you are abiding in Christ, what kind of life is, is, is that flowing through you? The kind of life that is flowing through you does not bring anger, malice, hatred, unforgiveness. The life that flows through Christ is a unique life. It's love. Everybody say love. Joy. Peace. Somebody say, I'm abiding in Christ. And your life does not reflect it. Are you really abiding? Do you really have an abiding faith? Look at what he said here. Verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. The branch cannot bear fruit of what itself. Unless it what? Abides in the vine. Genuine abiding and connection. Everybody say genuine. Not fake, not make believe. If you are going to be with me, Jesus said, be with me. If you are with me, I know those who are with me. A good tree does not bear evil fruit. Neither does evil tree bear good fruit. By your fruit, you shall be known. The question this morning is, what kind of fruit are you bearing? Because many of us, we claim to abide in Christ, but the fruit that shows in you cannot come from Christ. So who did you abide with? Can you help me ask your neighbor, Tutu, who are you abiding with? Who are you? Who are you abiding with? Who are you abiding with? A tree, a good tree, does not bear evil fruit. The kind of fruit you bear shows that you, you do not yet abide. You can have position, you can have title, you can be called canon, reverend minister, and yet you are not abiding. What will make us to know that you are abiding is the fruit that comes from your leaves. This is Easter message. God said, I want you to prosper. But your prospering spiritually is dependent on your abiding, your genuine connection with me. For without me, you can do what? Nothing. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him. Look at that. He who abides in me and I in him bears what? Much fruit. Look at your neighbor say much fruit is coming. For without me, you can do nothing. You can't bear fruit. When you abide, you don't struggle to abide. You don't struggle to abide. You just abide. If anyone does not abide in me, verse 6, he is cast out as a branch. May you never be cast out. And is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire. And they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask, ask what you desire. And what will happen? It shall be done for you. Is God a liar? Say abide. Abide. Verse 8 says, By this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Listen to me. This is where Robert made the rope. Faith to prosper is a faith that connects continuously, abiding in the vine. The vine is Jesus. Look at your neighbor say, and say, the vine is Jesus. Say, you are the branch. You need to abide continuously you need to connect permanently with him to abide me to attach tell your neighbor say attach it means to fasting it means to be fixed together 
It means to bring together into contact so that a real or national link is established. National link must be established between you and God. It means to associate with. Are you an associate of Christ? Tap your neighbor. Say, are you still here this morning? Because on people's eyes is going. When the real message is going on. Lord, prosper me. Prosper me. It's not by shaking while you are praying. It's by abiding. Everybody say abiding. <laughs> God said, the new strength that come from me. The life that flow from me. Will not get to you unless you are connected to me. The faith to prosper is a faith that links permanently with the source of life. In this kingdom, you can't prosper spiritually without genuine connection. It's not enough to come to church. When you are in church, you must really be in church. You must be in Christ. Not just be in church, but be where in Christ. So many are in church, but not in Christ. Oh, I'm born again. Oh, yes. But are you in Christ? Are you continuing with him? Are you associating with him? Are you living the kind of life he will want you to live? That is where abiding comes from. Every child of God must examine. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 says, Examine yourself whether you are in faith. Examine. This season is a season of examination. Am I really in faith? Am I deceiving myself? Am I really in faith? Because there's so many Christians in the world today. What they know about is deception. They wear the garment of deception all around. Are you wearing a garment of deception? In the church, you are the one that will dance the holy dance the best. You will sing the holy song the best. You will raise hand. You will move from pillar to post, organizing and making sure things are... But are you really in Christ? That's the question I want you to... God want me to ask you. Are you really in Christ? Are you really abiding in him? The fruit of your life is it showing for Christ or showing for somebody else? Whoever you resemble, you belong to that person. Who do you resemble? Who do you resemble? Abiding in me. Abiding in Christ. Abiding faith. Connecting faith. is what will make you to prosper in life. And in this kingdom... We will all prosper in Jesus' name. Yeah. The word abide me to plug into an electrical circuit. Plug. Ever say plug. Connecting faith. Abiding faith is a faith that plug permanently. We are here now. So many things are plugged into the source of power. When we leave, they disconnect them. As a child of God, God does not have, you cannot lo localize God. Many children of God has localized God in the church. It's when I'm in church, I will connect. But when I come out of the church, I will unplug myself. We behave like machine. But we are not machine. Look at your neighbor and say, are you a machine? God cannot be localized. Wherever you find yourself, God is there. Connect. In your house, God is there. In your place of work, who is there? In your bedroom, who is there? In the dark place, because some young men, they will not talk where there's light. It's in darkness. They will go to the darkness and come. As if nobody will see them. God does not have darkness. He does not have light. He is light. Whatever you want to say, say it in the light. 
The day I proposed to my wife, it was public in the light. There's no need for corner, corner. In the light. Everybody say light. If what you want to say is right and just, say it in the light. Not in one corner. In the dark place. Why do you have to wait till evening? When there is physical darkness. Say it. The afternoon, say it. Go to one corner, say it. If somebody say, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, if what you are doing is right, say it publicly. When I say publicly, I'm not saying everybody should be there listening to you. Are you listening to me this day? Help me ask your neighbor, are you connected? Ask somebody, I say, are you really connected? Because what I see in you does not show connection. It does not show abiding. You need to, you need to, you need to look at yourself all over again. Because, you see, let me tell you. God said here, profound word. He said, a brand that does not abide in me, he said, shall be cut off. He said, it will wither. And men will gather it and throw it where? That's a very strong word. That's why all of us need to look at ourselves. Am I really abiding? Because if you are not useful to Christ, you cut, you get cut off. May we never be cut off. Amen. Can I hear a big guy? Amen. amen. I say, may we never be cut off. Amen. May we abide persistently, amen. continuously, together with Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God said to me. Some of my children are not abiding. They claim to, but they are not. But I want them to abide. I am the source of their strength, but they don't know. I am their energy. I am the prosperity. Spiritual prosperity they need, but they don't know. Until you have it spiritually, you cannot have it physically. In this kingdom, oh, let me tell you something. Outside that kingdom, outside the kingdom, all those people you see, some of them have covenant with something or another power that they bow to and they are very wise about it. It's only in the kingdom. We play with God. We play with God. You think they don't have something? Oh, it's a little leg. They have something they are speaking to. They have something they are buying to. They have, some of them have something they are putting oil on top every day consistently. Oh, you don't know. In this kingdom, you need to abide. Jesus said the children of this age, the children of the world, they are wiser than the children of light because they know how to abide with their powers. The children of God only visit the source of their power once in a blue moon. Jesus said, abide. You want to prosper? Abide. There must be a continuous flow. Everybody say continuous flow. Continuous flow of the life of God. Continuous flow of the nature of God. Continuous flow in you. And let me tell you, if there is a continuous flow, there will be a boom in your life one day. You will see things happening that you never imagined can prosperity will happen against the run of play. Jesus said every branch in me that abide will bear fruit. Every branch that abide very well will bear much fruit. Ever say much fruit. Level of connection is what God is speaking to us about. We will never die young in the mighty name of Jesus. We will never go to hell in the mighty name of Jesus. God wants us to prosper. To abide means to submit to. Tell your neighbor, say, have you really submitted to God? To abide means to put up with. Put up with God. To abide means to accept. To abide means to acknowledge. To abide means to bear with. 
To abide means to concede or consent to. Not many Christians consent to God. Every word of God, they despise it. God is speaking. They despise it. God himself said it in Proverbs chapter 1, verse, uh, from verse 25. They woo none of my... Put it up there. Because you disdain all my counsel. And woo, I have none of my rebook. You know, you rebook some people. They still went ahead and did, and did the same thing. Of what useful is the rebook? If you will not at listen. Let me read that again. Because you disdain all my counsel, you despise it. And who have none of my rebook, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. May terror never come upon you. Amen. When your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. Why? They are not abiding. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They will have none of my counsel and despise every rebook. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fool will destroy them. But whosoever listen to me, look at your neighbors, are you listening to God? We dwell safely, and we be secure from fear, without fear of what? Evil. Look at your neighbor, are you really abiding? The question in this period is, he died for us. In order for us to abide in him. Life is flowing every day from him. Ceaseless life. Eternal life. Prosperity life. Every life. Life. Things that will make our life worth living. Is flowing from Christ daily. Hourly. Minutes. Seconds. Is flowing. But it's going to flow to people who abide. Look at your neighbor. Say you need to abide. To put up with, to abide me, to live with, to put up with, to stand for, to tolerate, to dwell, to remain. Remain. Tell your neighbor, say remain. remain. To stick around. Stick around Jesus. Don't be one Sunday, Sunday, Sunday that are praying Christian. Stick around. Tell your neighbor, say stick around. Reside. Reside. To have one's abode in. To abide me. To, want, to have one's abode. Abide. You have your abode in. To accept without opposition or questioning. When you accept Jesus, it must be without what? Opposition or what? Questioning. Many people are in faith, but they are really not in faith because they question the integrity of God. Listen to me. God has sent a message to you and to me and to everyone. Listen to me. Faith to prosper is the faith to abide in. Faith to connect permanently with. Not one time you are in and you are out. You are in and you are out. You are in and you are out. You cannot prosper like that. And that is the way many Christians behave. They are in today. One brother come. Eat sweet. And say, hey God, forgive me. You want to come back again. In and out. A branch that does not abide in me is cast forth. May we never be cast forth. Yeah. Romans 5, 17. God want us to abide fully in him. For he by one man's offense, death reign by one. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. You can only reign in life by who? By Jesus. So abide in him. When you abide, you will reign. People who abide will reign with Christ. Tell your neighbor, say you will reign in Christ. Tell your neighbor, say, you will reign in Christ. Are you still here with me? 
Are you still here with me or you have gone home? Because I can see some people's eyes. You know, devil knows how to operate. It is when the word is coming, it will now blow cool here. So that you will miss the point. But you will not miss the point. That's why after now, you get the message. The devil, you think, I will miss it. I will get the tape. I will listen to it again. Because I can see some of your eyes. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. The availability of God's power in your life is your secret to prosper in life. The availability, continuous availability of God's power in your life is your secret to prosper in life. So faith to prosper is the faith that permanently connects you with God's power. Faith to prosper is that faith that permanently connects you with God's power. It makes the power of God available to you anytime you need the power in every area of life. Somebody listening this morning, faith to prosper. Faith to prosper. Make the power available for you anytime you need it. Let me tell you, in this end time, we need God's power anytime. You need it in your marriage to prosper there. You need it in your business to prosper there. You need it in your spiritual life to prosper. You need it in your, ma- in, in, in your relationship between you and your wife or your husband to prosper. You need God's power. Everybody say, I need God's power. Say it louder. Say, I need God's power. And I need it consistently. It makes the power of God available to you anytime you need the power in every area of life. This was the power Jesus used. Jesus used this power of permanent connection with the Father and he succeeded. Throughout, when he was physically here, he succeeded because there was connection. Everybody say connection. You see it in his word. John 8, 29. And he that sent me is with me. The father hath not left me alone. For I do always. Everybody say, I do always. Those things that please him. I'm in connection with him. Everybody say, I'm in connection with God. John 17, 21. That they all may be one. As thou father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Verse 23 say, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Look at your neighbor, say, be made perfect in one with God. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and has loved them as thou has loved me. Everybody say permanent connection. Not today I am in, tomorrow you are out. No. You will prosper and bear fruit in life when you are permanently connected with him. In a few minutes time, let me show you areas you need to connect with the Lord. Number one, you need to connect to him by covenant of bat. Ever say covenant of bat. I've said a little bit of that. John 1 12. As, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. As many as received him, he gave them the right, the power to become children of God. Even to them who believe in his name. Covenant of bats. It's very important. If you are here today, you are not born again, you need to get born again fast. If you are not, if you are going to have faith to prosper, you need to get born again. Everybody say, get born again. You need to receive Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior. You need to receive him. John 3, 36. 
He that believeth the Son, he who believes in the Son has what? Everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not do what? See life. But the wrath of God abides on him. How many of you want the wrath of God to be permanent on you? That person will never prosper when the wrath of God is upon you. God said, when you believe the Son, you are in a covenant relationship. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, let me tell you the truth, you must be born again. Can you help me turn to your neighbor and say, you must be born again. He said, let me tell you the truth, you must be born again. You must be born again. Number two, area of connection. Connect to him by love. Everybody say by love. Love. Connect to God by love. It's not everyone that is born again that actually love God. Then when you love somebody, you don't become distant to that person. When you love him, you don't become distant. When you love him, we will see sacrifice of relationship which many don't have. In the name of, I walk on island. In the name of, I, I, I live very far. When we are growing up in Christ, and I'm still growing up, we live very far to the church. But we if we are going to trek, we find ourselves there. We don't take up job that we end our relationship with God. Why? Because we cannot succeed without that love. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't succeed without loving God. Connect to him by love. You got to love him. Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment which make greatness possible. Are you listening to me? The man of God said, this is the great commandment that makes great. When you love God enough, you cannot stay on the ground for too long. Somebody listen to me. You cannot stay on the ground for too long. You need to love God. Tell your neighbor, say, love God. Let there be sacrifice in your relationship with God. Don't do it in convenience. Majority of church members serve God, love God at their convenience. We cannot put upon you sacrifice. There is no sacrifice you are given. Connect to him. Permanently connect to him. In love. Everybody say in love. Proverbs 8, 17. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early, seek me diligently. What will happen? When you find God, you find prosperity. Verse 18. Verse 18. Riches and honor are with me. And only what? Riches that never fade away. Not the one economy we, 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 we mess up. Enduring riches and righteousness. Verse 19. My fruit is better than gold. Yes, than fine gold. And my revenue than what? Choice silver. Verse 20. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice. Verse 21. That I may cause those who love me to inherit what? And what are you looking for in Lagos? God said, I'm the one that will cause you. Your relationship with me, your connection with me, we make this happen. I will cause those that love me to inherit wealth that I may feel their what? Treasury. How many of you want your treasure to be, treasury to be filled up? Connection. Tell your neighbor, say love connection. Listen to me. Listen to me. Kirakita Odola. And some people will not understand until they get old. Kirakita Odola. Kashishe Bieru Kotonka Olon Olon Shekini. In other words, struggling, struggling. I want to become this. Does not make people rich. God is the one that makes people rich. The earlier you know it, the better. 
You think he cracked that? The time of God, you use it for yourself. You use God's time in the name of Kirakita. Have you not been rich? Are you not a rich man? Can we call you rich? Kirakita. I cannot sleep. I can ki 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 ki. Listen to me. Kirakita o dollar. Give God's time for God. And let us see whether God will not cause you to inherit. He said, his word is true. Unquestionable God. Connect. Tell your neighbor, say connect. connect. It's only on Sundays on people. Some people, they say, Pastor, we party message. We can't go Again, again, bate me long of a sodo. The real do is what you are doing now. Tell your neighbor, say Kirakita or dollar. Say it again, say Kirakita or dollar. It's not by struggling. <laughs> when I see the way people struggle in this city, and you can't find what they are struggling about in there. Ari bata, ari sket, ari sokoto, and you are struggling. God's time. You see, the time in your church is God's time. In your own church. Don't know about the other. In your own church. That God, time is God's time. You cannot use God's time and think things will be normal. Is this meek or meat? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Love. Everybody say love. Love. It will cause those people to inherit. It will feel their treasure. John 15, 12. This is my commandment. That you love one another. Tell your neighbor, say love one another. As I have loved you. Say love one another. As I have loved you. You cannot say you love God. When you don't love man that you see. In fact, God has synchronized it. And make it smaller. You cannot say you love God. When your husband, you can't you can love your husband. Every time, Ebu Nisha, Ojiwe Dauri Okuni Yeru, because Ebu, you you almost turn the man mad because of abuse. Vis a vis, there are some men too that ah ah, their own is too much. When they abuse their wife like this, ah, you say ah, uh, Shadan Kata. If you are a woman, we will say, ah, 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 but you are a man and you are abusing like that. Look at your neighbor, say love. love. Say it again, say love. love. Love, 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 love. Sacrificial love. That's the love that connect with Jesus. Sacrificial love. Love you. You can't say, I love God. When you don't, the closest person, you see, God knows how to synchronize things. Ah, I love God. You feel goose pimple when you come to church. I love God. You begin to sing and be shedding tears. Uh, and you are, you, are, you are keeping malice with your wife. How can you say you love God that you don't see? When man that you see and you have been commanded to love, you do not love. Look at your neighbors. Are you really abiding? I mean, you are faking your abiding. You are faking your connection. Are you really abiding? Are you really abiding? This is Easter. Are you really abiding? See, I'm abiding. Pastor, <laughs> the way I abide, <laughs> my own abiding is, is serious. It's serious. My own abiding is, is serious. Are you really abiding? Answer the question in your heart. Mm. Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm going to connect with him by love. John 15, 9 to 10. As the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Tell your neighbor, say, continue in this love. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 to 10. Romans 12, 9 to 10. Romans 12, 9 to 10. Let love be without what? Hypocrisy. Because there are so many hypocritical love. You go to the back. 
And the person you say, eh, you begin to bite, which they call back by. Let love be without hypocrisy. Ab all what is evil, cling to what is good. Verse 10. Be kindly affectionate to one. Everybody say, be kindly affectionate to one another with what? Brotherly love. In honor, given preference to one another. That is how to connect to Jesus. Ah, I am connecting. And yet, unforgiveness is the order of the day in your life. Are you really connecting or you are deceiving yourself? That's why some people will dry up. Jesus said they will wither. Anyone with that genuine connection will do what? We wither. I'm not going to do like this. I'm not diplomatic. You know me by now. He said it. So anyone without genuine connection will do what? Do you want to get with that? Then I no go with that. <laughs> Number three, connect to him by fellowship. Tell your neighbor, say by fellowship. It's not just love. Connect to him by fellowship. There must be a rapport between you and God. There must be communion. Everybody say communion. Consistent communion. Not only in church building. It has to be continuous. As you are driving your car, connection must be there. Communion, heart to heart talk with your maker. Connect to him by fellowship. Also connect to him by gathering together with other believers. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembly of one another as a manner of some. Tell your neighbor, say, are you one of them that forsake the assembly? You will forsake it on Tuesday. You forsake it on, on Thursday. First Saturday of the month, we don't see you. Not forsaking the assembly of one another as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Tell your neighbor, day is approaching. You know? Jesus is coming again. Thank God for that powerful message my wife preached last week. He is coming. Either you pray against it, he will come. He cannot be prayed against. He's coming. Tell your neighbor, say he's coming. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion, everybody say communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Connect with Jesus in fellowship. You see, when we gather together here, who is with us? Can you say it louder? Who is with us? Who is with us? When you isolate yourself from the garden of the saints, you are not connecting permanently. You are not connecting. Don't, don't eliminate yourself. Don't, don't, don't get, make sure you connect in fellowship. Anytime believers are gathered, gather with them. Because when you gather, you see Jesus there. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in their midst. Connect in fellowship. Connect in departmental fellowship. Connect in the fellowship of the church. Connect in the service of the church. Connect, connect, connect. That is how to connect with Jesus that will make you to bear fruit. That will make you to prosper. Number four, connect to him by word. Everybody say by word. By word. Connect to him by word. John 1.1 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made by him. And nothing were made that, and without him nothing was made that was made. Connect to him by word. As you read the word of God you are connecting to who? You are connecting to who? Say it louder. You are connecting to who? So many people it's only on Sunday they connect. After Sunday, Bible to, to under my pillow. Under my pillow. Under my pillow. Is that your case? Or in the shelf? 
when you read the word, you connect with Jesus. You connect with Jesus. John 15, 7. I'm almost rounding up this convention. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be what? Done unto you. Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Connect in word. Tell your neighbor, say, connect in word. Isaiah 65, verse uh, 55, verse 10 and 11. For, so, for as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not either, but watereth the heart, and maketh it bringeth forth, and bald, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be, that goeth out, goeth forth out of my mouth. He shall not return unto me void, but he shall accomplish that which I please, and he shall prosper. Tell your neighbor, say, the world will prosper you. He shall prosper in the things which I please, and he shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. John 5, 39, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify of me. Connect to Jesus Christ in what? In word. God said, when you search the scripture, the scripture is talking about me. So you connect to me in the word. Is somebody going to connect to God in word today? Connect to God in word. 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 Let, let me have mercy on somebody. Connect to God in word. I will finish my Easter message next Sunday by God's grace. Because if, uh, there's so many connections. I can't finish it so there's no point. Continue. I deserve the rest in next Sunday. Will you be here next Sunday? Because without this connection, you will get nowhere. Jesus said, abide in me. There are many ways you abide in Christ. There are many ways you connect with him. And you need to know it. So that when we say it, we don't just say it, we want you to do it so that you can connect. When you connect with him, the life of God will flow into you. The life of God and you will prosper. Everybody say, I will prosper. Say it louder. Say, I will prosper. I am preaching on faith to do what? To prosper. How many of you have gotten something from this? Put your hands together for Jesus. You see that this is different from prosperity message like they think. This is deep. I was blessed when God was speaking to me. I was blessed. God said, look, it's my connection with you that makes things happen. It's my connection. So there is faith to connect. There's faith to connect. And that's connecting faith, abiding faith. Once that is done in your life, go and rest. Things will work. Everybody say, things will work. God will rise for you when, in, when the time comes for him to rise for you. Connecting faith. I want you to rise this morning and reconnect yourself to your maker. Stand up and pray right now and say, Lord, I am reconnecting myself to you afresh. I'm reconnecting myself to you. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. If it's beyond what you can say in, the, in understanding, pray in the spirit. Say, Lord, I am reconnecting myself to you. I am reconnecting fully, fully. Tell him, tell your maker, I, if connection will make you to prosper, say, Lord, I am reconnecting myself to you. I am reconnecting myself to you this morning. Don't leave until the altar call is said. Reconnect. 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 God is asking you to reconnect. Nobody prosper without reconnecting. Without continuous abiding. Without continuous connection. Abiding in Christ. Pray for yourself this morning. I am reconnecting myself, oh God, afresh. 
And I'm making it more permanent this time around. I am making it more permanent. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, you have prayed. Place your right on your chest, everybody, first. Say after me, dear God in heaven. Today I examine myself. Whether I'm in faith. I ask, oh God, to forgive me all my shortcomings. Today I am reconnecting back. And I'm making it more permanent. I am fasting myself to you. Be one with you. I am one with you today. In covenant, in relationship, in fellowship, in word, and by birth, I reconnect myself to you. Because my prosperity depends on my connection. So I connect permanently unto you today. Father, let your life that brings about prospering let it flow in me. I want to see the evidence of my connection from today in every area of my life. I want to see it in my relationship with you. I want to see it in my fellowship with you. I want to see it in my sacrificial love for you. I want to see it in my financial life. I want to see it in my marital life. I want to see it in my relationship with everyone. I want to see the result of my connection. Because your word says, anyone that connect with you will bear fruit. I want to bear good fruit as a result of my connection. I want to bear good fruit as a result of my connection from today. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.